Hey guys, um, I'm sorry for my appearance. I'm sorry for like being late with this upload because uh, I had technical difficulties yesterday with my showdown. My showdown like client didn't load, and I couldn't build my team, and I couldn't face Tom. The Rizzle, the man, the Rizzle is beast. Is uh, is like his Twitter uh, link, Twitter name, and, and uh, like fortunately I could face him this morning, so that's 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 all good. I didn't have time to uh, live commit or to upload it straight away because I had to go out in the fucking sun to play sports and drink alcohol and that's why I'm slightly sunburned which you might which you will probably see I'm like sunburned from this part of the face like all the upper half of the face and not below this it's not like I was wearing like a mask or anything but it's, it's like my, my, my natural beard wasn't sunburned and the rest of my face was fucking sunburned as fuck so I might be glowing red but uh, it's kind of funny. You can laugh at my misery. I don't fucking give a flying fuck. I do give a slight fuck, but that's fine. Anyway, Tom's team was Landris, Tarion, Talonflame, Empoleon, Lissy, Neuvern, Ariama, Megasabla, Glygor, Metagos, and Raichu, and Kecleon. And as you can probably see on the spreadsheet, uh, Kecleon, he dropped Kecleon after this week and picked up Earthstrike and Gorgas. Uh, so those changes didn't affect in this week, but it only affects in week 10 and week 11 and onwards. And yes, uh, the things I got my different laptop right here. Aha! The things I. The notable flaws on his team I did are the notable things that I mentioned on his team, and like this. Not that kind of thing. What says Mega Stabilize? Only one weakness, of course. It's only Fairy, which I do in fact not have on my team. Like, I don't even have coverage of Fairy, so that's, that fucking sucks. Uh, the quad weaknesses. He has a few quad weaknesses. It's three ice weaknesses in Neuburn, in Lender's Tyrion, and in Gligor. And he has a quad rock weakness in Telfer. Uh He's got two defoggers, uh, at least two worthwhile defoggers being uh, Gligor and being Epony. He's got offensive threats. It's only offensive threat, like nothing really worried me, but I guess he had Neuburn as an offensive threat and Telfer as an offensive threat. Uh, Medicos I wasn't worried about, and even Telfair wasn't really worried about, worried about to be honest with you. Um, I guess right so Medicos could be an offensive threat, but then again, I, like I said, didn't really worry about it. Even Napoleon could be an offensive threat, and again, I did not really think of it as, as an offensive threat. So his team offensively didn't really scare me, that's what I'm trying to say here. Um, he has only one Dark Resist too, uh, being Hariyama. Uh, which is, 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 is a good thing on my, my end because if he doesn't bring Hariyama, I can basically spam uh, Hydreigon's Dark Process. Especially because he doesn't have Fairy Time, which makes uh, Hydreigon even more versatile and viable. And yes. And yes, that's basically the things I've ever done on his team. Um, uh, the things I expected him to bring were, of course, Mega Save, like, like I said, I don't have a Fairy Type. And it, with magic bounce it does really well against like anything. The right too, because it's it's speedy, it can be scarfed, it can be sashed, it can be life rope. I think scarf would be the best set for him to bring. Uh, to add speed my Mega Gyarados and my uh, rain boost uh, what's this for? His boot ups and stuff like my tornadoes and shit like that. I expect him to bring Teleflame. I did write down uh, check item for natural good because that's the only thing he has to beat my uh, boot ups with. I do have a, a good counter in Arcanine as well, but that's maybe why I, see. I shouldn't have expected him to bring it because in fact he did not actually bring it. Uh, then again, it could still be a threat because it's it's one of the few things I do fear on his team. Uh, not fear necessarily, but it can be a, a win condition on his team. Uh, next, I expect him to bring Apollyon, uh, Metagross and Blissey. Um, so yes. Uh, Blissey being the bulky fuckers as usual, so that's it. And yes, um, to my team, I guess. To my team, uh, the things I brought. Let's quickly. Get. I brought. Oh, let's go quickly. This fucking shitty laptop, which is quite heavy at some point. But yeah. I brought Thumbs Up, the uh, Kaboot Ups, for the first time in my whole GPC career. It's a Lumberry Switch Sim. Uh, sweeper with Soul Sense, Aqua Jet, Superpower and Waterfall. Uh, the only thing that could resist any of these moves is Neuvern, but uh, after Stealth Rocks it dies to a plus, one, plus 2 boosted Rain boosted Waterfall. 
So that's in fact why I didn't run like Stone Age on this. And it's adamant because this is all I need to add speed stuff with. Uh, next up is Gyarados, and Gyarados is a substitute Dragon Dance Waterfall Earthquake set. Uh, I didn't need Crunch because like Nintendo's team is really weak to Crunch. The only thing like I said again is the Noivern, which I only need some damage on um, for, for it to be weak and for it to be tied to either of these two guys, the, the Kabutops or the Gyarados. And yeah, it's it's substitute because I can set up on, on stuffs and Dragon Dance because it sweeps teams. And the, the corporates because it breaks his team. Easy, easy, easy. Uh, balance the um, skill swap uh, Toxic Stop of Rock Slide, uh, Bronze Arm. Uh, it's the, uh, the Heat Proof Bronze actually. Uh, the Heat Proof is, of course, because he's bringing Delph Flame, and this is a good Delph Flame check slash counter. Uh, with a defensive investment, in hindsight, I should have brought Culber Berry because, as you can see, I brought Skill Swap, and that's mainly for the Mega Sableye. To be the Mega Sableye, to get up Stealth Rocks against Mega Sableye. Or to toxicate if he uh, becomes a threat with the, uh, the combat sets. And shenanigans. But yes, I should have brought Culber Berry in hindsight. And next up is the Thorn and Anus, and which is the Dembrock Rain Dance set. It's a prankster Rain Dance for my Kabut Ups and for my Gyarados to break teams to, 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 to wreak havoc on his team. Uh, it has the Hurricane because it's fully, uh, like, it cannot miss in the rain, of course. It's got U turn and knockoff. Knockoff because it's, like, obviously the, uh, a good utility set. It's U turn because it can get the, uh, the initiative, or I can get a good switch out into my Rain Sweeper, or I don't fucking know, sex something else. I don't fucking know. It can be anything. Uh, it's max special attack because the Hurricane hits like a truck. It's G6, the Life Herb Head Dragon. Uh, like any dragon set would have worked. I was gonna bring like a taunt dragon, but then again he does have the save life, which is pretty centralizing in his team. Which like, uh, guess I, I meant that I couldn't bring a lot of stuff. Let's let's just give it that. And it's it's a max speed, not max speed. It's an uh, speed at uh, speed lander Terrian. It's not scarfed. And um, max like jolly max uh, max speed. It's got a 252 in special attack to get max power Draco, max power dark pulses, and the uh, attack EVs to uh, hit something like plus your power. And the roost because I can like roost up the life orb damage against multiple things in the team. For example, Empoleon, for example, Gligor. I don't know. He's got lots of things which is which I don't really fear uh, too much. So that's a T6 set. And next up, last but not least, is Nilkuiv. And Nilkuiv is mainly there to be annoying uh, with the ice beam, with the coverage, with the air power. Any Dragon Tail to um, like stop wish passing to be annoying against Sableye and uh, Blissey and the Toxic Spikes because it could really help against team with Sableye with uh, let's see what Raichu I guess, Hariyama which could be a problem um, because it's bulky and can basically live a hit from Kabutops and from Gyarados if it's not very booster plus one. Um, so yes that's basically why I brought these mons and with these sets. And let's, I guess, go into the match and see what will happen from there. Okay, let's go. His team he brought, as you can see, the first thing I noticed on his team, he didn't bring a Telfine, which is in some way good and in some way bad. Uh, it's it's good because Telfine is, of course, one of his most annoying physical threats. On the other hand, I did have like a clear win condition in Kabutops, which could easily set up against his stealth and whatever set he was gonna be and sweep the remainder of his team hopefully so yes that that's basically why it's a good and bad thing um, and the other thing I noticed on his team that it's it's really weak to Gyarados and Kabutops in general it only has one water assist and that's Empoleon which ties to either uh, either the IQ or the superpower from one of my rain sweepers or the water type sweepers uh, of course, he leads off with Mega Mogwai, uh, not Mega Mogwai, uh, the Mogwai, the Sableye, Mega Sableye, which uh, I predict by leading off with uh, Bronzong. It might seem like a good uh, prediction on his end, uh, leading with that, because he can block Mist and Hazards and stuff. But of course, I do have, in fact, the... Okay, I just talked for like a fucking minute without clicking the resume button, but that's fine. I'm just gonna continue, just gonna like repeat what I just said. Uh, the first thing I noticed on his team, in fact, that he's not bringing a Delphine, and that's that's a good thing and a bad thing. Uh, the good thing it's because he's like an offensive, like an offensive sweeper, which can easily like wreck my team if I am like not careful around it. 
And it's a bad thing because Kabutops was like built to uh, set up versus him and sweep the rest, like the remainder of his team. Um, on the other hand, the, the 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 next thing I noticed is that he is really weak to either of Gyarados and Kabutops. It's like he only has one water resist, and that's in Polo, which dies to either the EQ from Gyarados and the Kabutops superpower. Which is a really good thing in my end, so I do have two win conditions which can easily break his team, we can easily win, uh, especially if he's, he's, he's like letting me set up. And yeah, that that's like the, the things I noticed, and um, like going into the match, I expected him to get a bit uh, Mogwai, the Mega Sableye, because of course he wants to uh, get a Mega like done as soon as possible, and like block my, my hazards, block my annoying sad stuff things. I clicked pause for no reason, but I must want to click play. Um, he's going for the Calm Mind for the setup in the first turn while I skill swap and get the Magic Pots, and he gets the Hit Proof. I go for the Toxic and, and Hindsight because, like I said, he doesn't really have. Uh, he doesn't have Tell Flame, so he doesn't really have any weaknesses to the Cell Drugs, which I think then in that case, like the Toxic is more crucial for my, uh, for my liking in that case. My apologies, I have to pause it real quick. Um, going into the, the, the G thingy because he's most likely mono attacking because it's the set he usually runs with, like Willows, Recover, Combine, and Drop Pulse. He could have run Ghost to like the Shadow Ball in my case because he doesn't have a normal type, but that's fine. He's gonna go into Blissey uh, as I just do my shenanigans with Dragon Tail, with the Earth Powers, with the moves and all. I expect him to switch item to Blissey, uh, into Sable the last turn. Uh, but in this end, I we can bless you to the point where it's forced to go for the, uh, but not forced necessarily, but he's likely gonna go for the uh, wish. Well, I can set up my T-Sparks. I'm gonna stay and go for the Dragon Tail because I don't wanna have anything paralyzed on my end of the team. And he brings, uh, at least he gets in a, like Napoleon, the Empoleon, and he reveals me to be the Shuka Perry set, which is kind of annoying because that means I'll lose. I'll lose near Queen at that end. And yes. Which is is bad on one hand because like the right has like a lot of opportunity to fold switch around or to t-build or to do whatever it wants to. On the other hand, Nidoqueen was not gonna do a whole lot against this team because he had um, Blissey, so it's kind of fine. But I would have liked to skip it around, of course, uh, blocking the t-waves from the Blissey and, and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go to Gyarados because. At this point, Gyarados can easily sit up against this if it doesn't have Roar, or it can easily sweep his fucking team if we get a two vote. Uh, Dragon Dance and a, and a substitute, or just Dragon Dance in general. Uh, as he goes for the Sculpt, and he was going for the Sculpt because, as you can see, it's more than likely his best play. Uh, he conferred to me he does, in fact, not have Roar. Uh, so, Scalding was his best play, and he gets the 30% luck, which is annoying as fuck. It really is. And it is because I could have set up another Dragon Dance, I could have set up a Substitute, which was likely gonna be my better play. Um, and I could have won against him. I could have straight up swept him. Like, nothing on his team uh, was was able to beat me. Blissey would have died, this would have been me set up further. Um, Raichu, if it was Scarlet, would have broken my Substitute, or if I had set up, if I had set up another Dragon Dance, I would have been outslowed. Uh, I would have slowed my Gyarados and would have been taken out of Waterfall for an earthquake, so... Uh, so we had basically nothing and he was really fucking lucky getting the Sculpt on this thing. And yeah, the Sculpt on this thing, but it, it's whatever, I have, I've got to deal with it. It's it's my best thing and I go for another Dragon Dance because I figured I would have do as much damage as possible uh, to what, whatever's bringing me. And I went for the Waterfall because um, I hope to get some Revenge Hex by flinching him and getting for the EQ the next turn. Uh, and spam my EQ until like multiple things are still die. But it doesn't happen. He gets the, uh, the hammer arm off and he kills my Gyarados. As I bring in G6, the Hydreigon, and he refills another berry. I would have fucking beaten him if I went for the earthquake or if it just didn't get hexed up in general. But yeah, he, he refills me to be the cover berry and he takes the hit and he beats my Hydreigon. And now I'm in a bad spot, as you can see. Oh, as you can see, he's having all six of his months, and I'm gonna, and I'm, I only have three months. 
So I know this is going to be a bad, uh, bad thing for my team. So the best thing for me to do is set up the rain as quickly as possible and do as much damage with my Kabutops as, as I can. And the play I make here is go for the, the knockoff because I just want to kill this this Gratus, the uh, the Grotus, the the Metagross, and he brings in uh, his his Mogwai, his his Sableye, as he goes through Will of this. And he goes through Will of this because he expected me to be a fully physical set. Uh, because as uh, as as you can see, I showed him the, the knockoff, so which is an understandable play, and I'm a okay with this. Um, he goes through Will of this, gets the, the gets the Burma as I go through the, the Rain Dance. Go for the hurricane in in defense, and I dodge the wordless because, like I said, he expects me to be like a fully physical set, uh, meaning that I couldn't have done anything to him, and that's why he went for another. Uh, he went for another uh, wordless, permitting me to switch out. But that's completely fine by me because that means that he is weak enough to the point where I can knock him out with U-turn. Uh, unfortunately, I get a minimum roll, and I do not knock him out with U-turn because of the burn, and. I still think it's it's fine to, for me to bring in Kabutops because he's more than likely gonna set up a sword stance, uh, not sword stance, uh, recover here to beat my uh, to beat my team or to go for another uh, well wish which I can do because Dolenberry, uh, which was not gonna be a likely play on, play on his end, but if he was gonna go for it, that would be fine a bit. Um, here I I can just set up sword stance because I do have the Dolenberry, and with the rain boost I can easily break his the remainder of his team. Um, well, I guess the remainder of his team. Um, but yeah, I go for the waterfall because he could in fact carry the fall play. I don't think he like like the moves he showed me, calm mind, uh, recover, and uh, darkness. I don't think he would have carried fall play, but I wasn't gonna like risk anything with this with this computers, especially because I know I can beat his team uh, with ease. Well, with ease, it's not with ease, of course. But I know I can beat this team uh, with this computers. Uh, with a plus two Kaputops in fact in the rain. I go for the waterfall, but the rain boost waterfall it's it's an easy KO on the uh, max defense save light. And I go for the super power and uh, on the Empoleon and because he refilled me to be the Chuka Berry, I do not fear him having the chill pole or anything, so here this is a crucial play and that's because I of course carry the Lumberry, meaning I that I can li live any hit he wants to go for if he wants to go for Thunder Wave, I can soak it up with my uh, Lumberry. If he wants to go for any weird move like Thunderbolt, Counter, I don't fucking know what this he gets, but I can live it. I can I can set up short ends and I can go for the, uh, the Waterfall in hindsight. And I go for the Waterfall because um, looking at the steam and looking at the Sugar Berries and the Cobra Berries, I know he's gonna be running the. Uh, what's his fucking berry card uh, called? Uh, I do know the name of the berry. It's just uh, I forgot it. The Chopo Berry, ha, that's the one. Uh, he, I know he's running Chopo Berry, uh, Blissey, and that's because I don't have, have any fighting types on the team. And he knows that I need a fighting move or a fighting. Well, move, of course, but. but yeah. I don't know what I was going to say. Uh, I know, he knows I need a fighting move to beat Blissey with. And that's why I go for the, uh, the Short Sense instead of the Superpower again, because. And anyway, Waterfall would have been a better player. Uh, waterfall at plus one would have had like um, an 80%, over 80% chance of not coming out. But, uh, knowing that, uh, that this is basically set up for me, I go for another sword sense and I wrap up the game. Uh, by, by being able to circle the Thunder Wave and go for the Waterfall uh, here, the crit did not matter in the slightest. It would have done like 135% minimum. So. Uh, this was kind of crucial. He told me that he was running enough speed to outspeed Mega Gyarados. Uh, after plus one because he was scarred right here. and he was running the rest of the uh, speedy fees in bulk like max attack and 128 speedy fees and 128 <coughs> defense uh, no not defensive fees uh, HP fees if it was the de defensive fees he would have um, been able to take up soak up the hits uh, soak up the hits anyway and with the like the 128 HP investment, it was a roll uh, whether I would take him down with the Aqua Cheater or not. And uh, luckily the roll was in my favor. Uh, wasn't in my favor, but I did get it, which was very crucial, of course. It was like if I lost the roll, I, I maybe Bronson would have been able to take a hit, but I would have more than likely not been able to win the game. So I'm 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 like glad I got a roll. That that's as easy as I can make it. But. 
Uh, yeah, luckily I got a roll. Oh, anyway, if it didn't get rolled, he would have died to poison, so... Uh, I might have been able to take him down with the... Uh, bronze on with the... Uh, yeah, I would have been able to take him down with skill swap. Toxic. Yeah, I think I could have been able to win him. Uh, I don't know why I'm gonna have like, a hybrid poison or anything, but... Uh, I'm weird and, and stuff. And I'm gonna keep this in, because I'm... Uh, I'm still a little bit drunk. That's my only explanation. I could go for another beer to be honest. Like my, my throat is really dry. Anyway, I did just kind of... That's it. My apologies, I'm gonna quickly finish up this game. Um, I'm gonna go for the Aquatid on the right to get a roll. Luckily I knock him out with the plus 3 Aquatid. And I finish him off with the uh, Waterfall and his Glycor. Which is fantastic, which means that I can... Uh, I have like the, the another trio of victory in my favor, which is fantastic. Which means I am still second because Lars is is uh, in fact first. I already uh, updated the spreadsheet. I will quickly show you the standings on this uh, on the spreadsheet. Um, in fact, Lars is still number one. He beat Sasha this week. Unfortunately, um, of course, Hex was of course playing a role in the game. I don't know if he would have beaten him uh, if he didn't get a role. I, th I think it would be an even match still, but. The Hex sealed up the game really easily for him. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I'm 7 and 2, of course. I'm still salty about the two losses I had because I was sick, but it, it's fine. I'm gonna beat uh, Lars, actually. He made some really peculiar, I guess, that's the, the kind of the right word to say, uh, drafts, transfers. I think he might have been drunk making them, but he got the Carrium Yarstick, which. or not the most terrible drafts, but he dropped Sloking and Amundus. And Sloking he didn't use at all, but was kind of a good mom. And Amundus is, was like one of his best months, and he dropped it. I don't know why, but he's got like only Mega Sepple as his grass as his now, and I don't know, I I don't mind at all, I like it. Good job, Lars. Anyway, the standings are... Lars is still first, unfortunately. I'm second. Uh, the friends will I'm being Lars on, because of course if he loses, I win. My difference is gonna be uh, higher than his uh, differential. But he needs to lose his game first. Which, uh, he does have a few tough matchups in uh, coming on. Uh, one of them being against Nacho, the number 3 opponent. And one of them being against... I think Richie? Let's quickly check. Borussia Dolphins versus the Texas Avatars and Borussia Dolphins. Never in policy, yeah. Against Richie, so uh, that's two tough matchups, which hopefully one of them he will lose, which means that I can claim my number one spot, which I rightfully own in my opinion. I'm sorry if you heard that, it was my phone. But yes, I will uh, I will be able to beat uh, David next week, of course. Claim my number one spot, hopefully, and if not, then I will. Uh, I will, of course, keep my number two spot because if Nacho loses, I keep my number two spot. If Nacho wins, then I can claim my number one spot. Easy as that. So I'm, I'm basically unable to lose my number two spot at this point, at least for this n next week. Uh, I'm facing Swalford FC from David, which is currently tenth. He um, he replaced Sisbit, Miss Sisbit, also another Jake. Um, and the Buffalon Bills after like week 4 5 ish. Meaning that uh, that David is. is uh, he, he like he's changed up the whole team from the so. But anyway, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have to beat him. Unfortunately for him, he's gonna have to go down against my, uh, my Flaming Rage. That's like a cool name. Uh, Flaming Rage is like a really standard name. Ah, I'm getting like waved out of track. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it here. Yeah, this, uh, I don't fucking know. See ya, Bryskies.